Okay, should we give this a go? Now, I've seen some answers around. I think I've seen one and a half right answers. Um, let's go through it, shall we? What's the derivative of the inside? Cos. What's the derivative of the outside? It's one over, so I'm just going to skip the one over and I'm just going to write it down the bottom. What is on the denominator? What's the derivative of sine inverse? 42. It's, a, it's the square root of, right? 1 minus. Now, and then usually we have x squared there, right? But this time, my inside function is sine. So I'm going to write sine squared x. Okay, now, just be really careful here, right? And what have I got? Follow with me. Cos x on 1 minus sine squared is equal to cos squared. So that looks to me like cos on cos, which looks like 1, which is wrong. Why? Well, it's not... Because it does the thing where it goes the other way. Yeah, okay, now, all right, now this is important, right? I'll, I'll draw this in a second, but I hope you remember roughly what this looks like, okay? So you know enough about what it looks like to know that we're kind of right, kind of right, actually we're exactly half right, right? But where did the other half go? What would the other part of the answer be? It would be, be minus one, right? Now, where did the minus one go? Where, where was the problem? Where was my problem? There's a problem here. What's the problem? Okay, all right. So, is, is the problem... the square root sign okay. So, at this point... Uh, sorry, wrong color. At this point, I'm okay. That's all right. I've just done the derivative. From here to here, I'm still okay, right? Because I've just got one minus sine squared is cos squared. That's always true. Okay, but this is where it breaks down. Okay, now what should I have written instead? If this is not, you know, what should, what, what am I missing? And you can do it a couple of different ways. Um, I would suggest the best way to write what's missing is to put an absolute value sign there. Okay, because this is important for us. So let me rub off this one. Okay? Now the reason why I think an absolute value sign is better than some of you are suggesting, I should slap a plus or minus at the front. Okay. The plus or minus is tricky. Uh, plus or minus, you get you, you solve a quadratic, right? And you're like, here are my answers. Plus or minus, whatever. Okay? But it doesn't tell you when it's one answer and when it's the other. Okay? Whereas we know, this is going to simplify out, it's positive one sometimes, and sometimes only, and negative one at other times. So I should know when each one is each, right? So plus or minus is kind of not enough information, right? So from here, I want to remember, what does absolute value mean? Go back to your definitions from the end of last year. Yes. This is equal to two things, okay? Um, let's take the positive case first. It should be cos x on cos x for what values? When hmm. cos x is greater than... Exactly. Good. So this only exists in a certain domain, namely when cos x is positive, okay? If the number inside there is positive, I just give you back the number. So this is 1. Okay. If, on the other hand, what you have is cos x being negative, then you flip it around. It's those cases where you get negative cos x. Okay, now, that's a little more helpful. Okay? So you can see how I'm saying more than just plus or minus 1 whenever. Okay, I'm plus or minus 1 in these specific places. And this is really helpful to us, because how did we graph this last time? We kind of... Um, we weren't very thoughtful, were we? We just like values, plot points, see what happens, okay? But this is meaningful, right? Let's think about this. Because we know what cos x looks like, right? Let me graph cos x and let me suggest to you to draw out a nice wide set of axes here. What does cos x look like? Something like this, right? I think that was better than my last one. Just. Okay, right. Now, what's this telling us? This graph, it's derivative. When cos x is positive, the derivative uh, is 1. So it's increasing. Okay? So look at all the places where cos x is greater than 0. Right? So for instance, right in between here, what's this domain? What are the two values on either side? Yeah, this is minus pi on 2 to pi on 2. Right? Which is what we got before. Okay? So that's why you're getting it increasing during this domain. So it's, it's looking something like this. Okay? But when I transfer over to this side here, 
why why did it just you know bounce okay and we were like oh it's kind of like sine it goes up and down but that's not really the reason this is the real reason right this is what happens to the derivative because of this absolute value sign right so in this domain between pi on 2 and 3 pi on 2 the derivative is negative 1 which is why it comes back down okay now you go from here to here, cos x is positive again. So that's why your gradient is 1. And there's where we get this um, up and down shape from. Okay, So it wasn't just, oh, that's kind of funny, and that's what the values do when you test them out. Calculus shows you why. Okay. All right, now, I want to give you one more example, and I'm going to get, again, you to think about it first. And because we've gone through this trick, hopefully you'll be a little more mindful of it this time, and I won't need to show you through it. Yeah. The blue is this actual graph, right? Wait, aren't you supposed to find the derivative from the graph? Yeah, so with these derivatives, I wanted to see, well, what does that say about the graph? And it, it gives it this kind of um, absolute value-like sort of characteristic. Okay. Um, because this is, um, this is the same thing that you get for the absolute value of x. The gradient is 1 sometimes, when x is positive, and it's minus 1 other times. Yeah. Uh, you know how the points are differentiated? Yep. Uh, should they be holes there or not? Um, well, I'm graphing the actual function, not the derivative. Okay. So if I were to graph the derivative, what would it look like? Um, I guess yeah, it would look like... Just the other way. Yeah. Well, let's see. Okay, so, you know, in this, in this domain here... Oh, sorry, that's... Um, what's pi on 2? That's like 1.57, so I should be lower than that. It looked like that. There's my, there's my 1, right? And then, like you said, at that point there... I don't know what the derivative is. And then down here... It will continue down at minus one. You get the idea. So yes, the derivative would have holes in it. Okay. Okay. So sorry. The function I wanted you to have a look at now was this. Now some of you who've been working ahead might recognize it. Okay. It certainly has some um, some suspicious characteristics about it. Okay. All the same, I'd like you to work out what its derivative is, and then off the derivative, do you notice anything unusual? And can we graph it on the basis of that? So there's the function, give it a go. Yeah. 